Hi there, it's Jeff here. Welcome to an exam style data response case study. Let's spend a little bit of time thinking about the market for second hand retailing in the UK. Here's a survey for figure one showing the most common second hand purchases by category. Uh, you can see that of the respondents to the survey, 30% had bought clothing, 20% books, movies, and games, uh, pre loved, pre owned. Uh, games, shoes, furniture, electronics, all the way down to pet products and DIY garden products. There is a big second-hand market in the UK. Extract 1 talks about changing consumer preferences and the growth of ethical consumption. Uh, awareness of environmental damage caused by fast fashion has increased. Many consumers are re-evaluating their buying habits. Some data there on the uh, externalities from the fashion industry. There are nearly 4,000 specialist second-hand stores nationwide and charity shops as well, generating approximately £700 million in sales by 2020. This figure probably gone up even more. And uh, the extract talks about a shift in consumer behaviour where ethical and environmental considerations are becoming important non-price determinants of demand. For many people, buying second-hand is a rational choice. Extract 2 is about the growth of online platforms. Digital innovation has reduced barriers to entry and reduced transactions cost in second-hand markets. And the extract talks about platform businesses such as Vinted and Depop, both of which have enjoyed spectacularly rapid growth. Depop was acquired by Etsy in 2021. Consumers, we are told, are shifting away from traditional retail channels. One in three have purchased second-hand clothing in the past year, and established brands such as ASOS, and H&M have responded by launching their own resale platforms or in-store take-back schemes. But life is tough for high street retailers, with store sales volumes falling by 7.3% between 2019 and 2023. Of course, that does include uh, some of the lockdown years during the pandemic. Here's a chart, an extract, figure two, showing the revenue from for Vinted, one of the largest uh, uh, pre-loved clothes platforms. Extract 3, the externalities in the second-hand market. Fast fashion's environmental toll underscores the role that second-hand markets can play in mitigating externalities. Producing one cotton t-shirt requires a lot of water and the UK sends a lot of tons of clothing to landfill each year. So hinting that the second-hand market can create significant positive externalities. As a result, there's growing interest in whether government policy such as VAT exemptions for second-hand goods, could further internalise these benefits and drive sustainable consumption patterns. Now, here are four at Excel-style data response questions. If you're doing a different board, then you can tweak perhaps the questions and the marks to suit your own requirements. So let's have a look at the five mark. With reference to extract two, explain what's meant by externalities in the context of the fast, fast fashion industry. So we start with the definition of externalities and then the application. In the context of the fast fashion industry, externalities occur when production and consumption of cheap clothing cause harm to the environment. And two bits of application are needed. Extract 2 says the fast fashion is responsible for 10% of global carbon emissions and creates 92 million tonnes of textile waste. So that would get the two application marks. These environmental costs not necessarily reflected in the price meaning that the market fails to allocate resources efficiently, leading to overconsumption and a dead weight loss of welfare. Now, you don't necessarily need a diagram for this question. You can use one. <clears throat> but as long as you answer the question and use the two bits of data. Here's an eight mark question with reference to the extracts. Examine two factors that may explain the increase in demand for second hand clothing. So one factor is increasing environmental awareness. Fast fashion responsible for 10% of emissions, 92 million tonnes of textile waste annually. So many consumers are choosing second-hand or pre-loved clothing to reduce their environmental impact. It's a non-price determinant of demand. But then you just need a line of evaluation. The extent of this effect may depend on how widely these concerns are held across different income groups. Things platforms such as Vinted and Depop are mainly used, for example, by younger people are more, more au fait and confident with the technology, and perhaps also younger families. A second factor 
is the growth of digital platforms. So supply can create its own demand. Creating the platform can make buying and selling used clothes more convenient. There's the application about Vinted from the figure reporting uh, just under six million pounds of revenue, over 16 million users. These platforms reduce transactions cost and increase choice, encouraging more consumers to switch away from traditional retail. That said, here's the evaluation. This trend may be limited to consumers who are comfortable with online shopping and digital payments and who have the income to access affordable broadband services. There is a digital divide in many advanced high income countries. Millions of people do not have the disposable income to be able to be able to afford super fast broadband on their mobiles or at home. And this, of course, is a factor limiting the use of these markets. Here's a 10 mark question. Assess the possible benefits to UK consumers from the rise of online secondhand platforms such as Depop and Vinted. So for 10 marks, we're normally looking for two analysis paragraphs and two evaluation points. One key benefit is increased consumer surplus. Secondhand platforms like Vinted allow individuals to access clothing at prices significantly lower than new retail alternatives. It's especially valuable, good application here during a cost of living crisis as consumers can maintain clothing consumption at lower costs, increasing their real income. The fact that one in three consumers purchased secondhand clothing in 2023 suggests this affordability is having a wide reaching impact. <clears throat> so the concept being used here is consumer surplus and real income. However, the benefits of this better affordability may not be evenly distributed. Indeed, many high demand secondhand items are now sold at premium prices, sometimes matching or exceeding new alternatives. In addition, risks from asymmetric information from fake goods or unreliable sellers may reduce the net gain to consumers. So buyer beware, <clears throat> you might be able to get a cheap secondhand sweatshirt or that uh, pair of premium priced trousers you were looking for. But if it's a used good or fake good, there is asymmetric information. The seller knows more than the buyer. A second, be <laughs> second benefit is the wider choice. Sites like Depop uh, specialise in vintage or unique items that may not be found in traditional stores. In other words, they have a much wider range of products. This enhances product differentiation, allows consumers to express their own individual preferences more easily. And that's a gain in allocative efficiency because you're, you have the range of choice uh, so people can better match their own diverse tastes. And that choice creates that dynamic efficiency as well. However, to evaluate, unlike shopping in a physical store, searching through thousands of listings can be time consuming and overwhelming. Yeah, so there's a time and cost involved here. Consumers also can't try before they buy, which may increase dissatisfaction or the likelihood of returns. And of course, returns generates their own cost. So these practical barriers mean that while choice expands, the actual utility gained may be diminished for cons some consumers. Could you stay with the concepts of utility? efficiency and product differentiation. Here's a 12 mark question. Evaluate factors that affect the profitability of businesses such as Vinted and Depop. Use a cost and revenue diagram in your answer. Now we only need one diagram, but we will need a diagram. Here's your first point. One factor influencing profitability is the ability of platforms like Vinted and Depop to benefit from economies of scale. As the number of users and listings increases, these businesses can spread their fixed costs, such as app development, server infrastructure, marketing, three great bits of application there, over bigger output. Uh, Vinted reported a 6% increase in revenue, achieving its first net profit, suggesting it's moving along a downward sloping long and average cost curve. This cost reduction boosts operating profits as the firm grows. We'll come on to the diagram in a second. However, economies of scale are not guaranteed. Correct. As platforms expand, there may be diseconomies of scale. More consumer service issues, including things like returns, uh, complaints, moderation costs, moderating rankings for buyers and sellers, platform complexity, which could raise average costs. Furthermore, fashion retailers such as ASOS and HMI have responded by launching their own resale platforms, which might then limit the long run scale of Vinted and Depop. So Vinted and Depop don't have it all to themselves. The established players are responding as you'd expect in this kind of market 
by trying to beat them at their own game. Another factor is increasing demand for second-hand clothing, which raises revenues. Okay, High demand increases transactions, volumes and commissions fees. So for platforms, these Vinted and Depop, it's all about the commission fees. It's taking a small percentage of sales. If unit costs remain the same, this could uh, increase their operating profits. A nice bit of application there. However, revenue growth doesn't always lead to higher profitability. As platforms expand, they often have to reinvest the money in marketing, user acquisition and tech upgrades to remain competitive. And indeed, these businesses might not necessarily be profit maximizers. They may be sales growth maximizers looking to earn basically a normal profit initially, cover their costs to grow rapidly and maintain their market dominance. Here's the diagram I chose to use. I could have shown a diagram showing increased in demand, but I've shown a economy of scale diagram. If you move from MC1 and AC1 down to MC2 and AC2, the unit cost of production is falling. The price falls from P1 to P2 and a profit maximizing firm will increase their output from Q1 to Q2. And you can then show the increase in the total profit by using nice labeled areas. So I think it's a good diagram to show economies of scale and uh, it means that the firm can make more profit even if the price per unit is falling. And finally, here's a 15 mark question. Discuss the extent to which the growth of the second hand platforms is likely to change the structure of the clothing retail market in the long run. My first point is that second hand platforms perhaps might change the market structure by shifting the industry a little bit away from oligopoly towards monopolistic competition. So those big brands, HMM, Primark, ASOS, they have dominated the market for many, many years. They benefit from brand loyalty and economies of scale. But digital platforms with millions of users have significantly reduced the barriers to entry for individual sellers and small traders, people perhaps trying to develop their own fashion brand. This enables a wider range of differentiated sellers offering unique or vintage items. So as the market becomes more populated with relatively small sellers, it begins to resemble monopolistic competition, especially with product variety and fairly low entry barriers. So a clothing retailer can jump onto the platform, a vintage platform, a Depop or what have you, and perhaps sell direct to consumers other than themselves using e-commerce sites or using uh, these digital platforms. However, be careful. The extent of the shift may be limited by network effects and the tendency towards natural monopoly. If you think about social media sites like WhatsApp and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, uh, there's, a, there's always, nearly always a tendency for first movers and first to scale businesses to become very dominant. Depop was acquired by Etsy for 1.6 million, giving access to capital, data and infrastructure. As platforms like Depop grow larger, it makes it harder for new entrants to compete and potentially creating barriers to entry. And ultimately, of course, that could lead to higher prices for consumers. So these platforms themselves may become monopolistic or oligopolistic, in which case there's a limited impact on competition. Another potential change arises from the disruption of traditional models. Okay, So we, we're told that one in three consumers have bought second-hand clothing and that clothing store volumes have fallen by 7.3% in those four years. So many shops have closed because retailers can't cover the operating costs. Firms like HMM and ASOS are launching, taking, launching take back and resale schemes. So this over time, this could lead to the erosion of dominant firms market share, a more fragmented market. And instinctively, the challenges facing direct bricks and mortar retailers opens the possibility of new challenger fashion retail firms to expand both online, selling direct to consumers, and in store, perhaps using pop-up operations. So typically, for example, if you've got a small fashion brand, you might want to take a, a short lease in a town or a city or a pop-up retailer to see if your product takes off and then grow from there. However, to evaluate traditional clothing retail firms, the ones that we've been around for years, also benefit from economies of scope brand loyalty and vertically integrated supply chains. So they've built a very sophisticated cost efficient supply chain. That allows them to respond to the threats from digital platforms. And in the long run, second hand retail may just function more as a niche segment. Okay, one in three people who have bought second hands 
but it's not the majority. It's not going to fully replace the convenience, the scale and the speed, speed to market, operated by the giants such as H&M. So the market structure may experience some disruption, but it may it not necessarily be a transformation from one market structure to another. Now, this case study provides a really interesting range of economic concepts. These are the micro ones, things like market structure, things like the uh, factors affecting cost, revenues and profits. And also, as we mentioned in one of the questions there, the market failure and the externalities, including uh, negative externalities from fast fashion, the positive externalities from reuse and recycling, linking there to the circular economy, and the persistence and the presence of information failures including asymmetric information when buying pre-loved products. How about testing your understanding? Here are five multiple choice questions to see if you understood the case study. So do have a go. Question number one. Which of the following best explains why second-hand platforms like Depop might experience falling average costs as they grow? What do you think the answer is to question one? Have a go. The answer is C. As they expand in scale, they achieve economies of scale. Here's question number two. The second hand clothing market in the UK is predicted to grow from 3.5 billion in 2022 to 9 billion by 2030. What is that as an approximate percentage increase? What do we think? And the answer is A, 157%. Question three, which market structure is most likely to describe a clothing retail market where many small sellers offer a differentiated, differentiated second-hand products? Which of those market structures do you think is most likely to describe that? And the answer is D, monopoly competition. Two questions to finish. Question four, which of the following is not typically considered a barrier to entry in online clothing resale markets. High setup costs for sellers, strong network effects favouring existing platforms, strict product regulation by the government, brand loyalty to established apps. What do we think? The answer there is C. This is not a market where there's a lot of product regulation. And question five. The ability of Depop, Depop and Vinted to undercut traditional retailers on price and variety is most closely linked to which economic concept? Is it diseconomies of scale, consumer surplus, price elasticity of supply, or productive efficiency? The correct answer to question five is D, productive efficiency. To undercut on price, you need to bring down your unit costs of operating the platform. Thanks for joining in this case study on second-hand markets. I hope you found it useful for your exam revision. If you did, consider pressing the like button so it helps the algorithm or so others can find it. Subscribe to the channel and uh, take care. See you soon.